Hi everyone, you have reached Chronicles of the Great Hair Diva. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, welcome back. For all you out there, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. If you happen to like this video, hit the like button. Share my video with your friends and family so that they can come to my channel and get to know me also. And comment in the comment section. And when I get an opportunity, I will comment back and chat with you. So listen, I'm here with my take on coming to America too. If you don't wanna hear any spoiler alerts, stop the video. You don't wanna hear my opinion on the movie, stop the video. If you think my opinion, I'm just being negative, stop the video because I'm giving my true take, my opinion on it, and it is not negative, it is just how I feel. All right, so let's get into it. Before we get into it, we got to back up a little bit and talk about Coming to America, the original. Coming to America, the original was iconic. It crossed so many cultural barriers. I mean, I don't care if you was black, white, white, yellow, orange, you was from Mars, you was from Venus, you was from America. You love the movie Coming to America. It had a lot of um, comedy in it. It introduced us to the world of Zumanda, which everybody was so happy about and excited about. There were people that based their real life wedding off of scenes from Coming to America, the original. I mean, they had dance scenes in this movie, the costumes in Coming to America. It was just so iconic and so beautiful that really, like I said, so many people based their real life wedding on this movie, okay? Candy from The Real Housewives of Atlanta was one of them. When she got married to her now husband, Todd, they had animals at their wedding. She did a whole dance scene that was, you know, based off of what happened in Coming to America at her real life wedding, okay? So it was just, you know, Coming to America is an iconic movie. It's always a little touchy for people when you want to touch something that was so iconic and do a sequel to it or do a part two to it. I think that's why some people, they tread lightly about doing a part two to certain things because it's like, how do I top the best? Because that's what happened with Coming to America 1. It was the best. It introduced us to Zumanda. And it wasn't until decades later that the world was introduced to another fictitious world where black people thrived. And that was Wakanda. Okay. Everybody loved the Wakanda. And the thing is, when you have, you introduce something like Zumanda in Coming to America, the original. And then you introduce Wakanda. If you're going to bring Zumanda back, you're going to do a part two, you got to bring it. You got to bring it. Because now, not only are you coming against the original of Zumanda, but you have people having their heads Wakanda. And so in my mind, you got to bring it. Yes, they are two separate movies, um, but you still need to bring it. And I think that's where coming to America too, it fell short for me. Because one, not only did it not bring it, it did not even come nowhere near the level of the original. And I think they just declassed the movie. I think they dumbed it down. And they had tons, when I tell you tons of star power in Coming to America too. But the thing is, star power doesn't make a movie. You can have 900 stars. But if the storyline, the writing, the plots, the jokes are not funny, you still will not have a good movie. I will say this, um, I'm glad I watched it on my Amazon Prime and I didn't go to the movie theater and actually pay for this, okay? Because, you know, when you go to the movies before the pandemic, um, you could be out $100 for a movie taking four people with you. By the time you buy the ticket, the popcorn, you drove there, so forth and so on, you're out like $100. Easy. Easy. I'm glad I watched it in my home. And I'm glad I was able to, like, I looked at it twice because I said, okay, you know what? Maybe I was too judgmental the first time. Let me let me look at this one more time. I looked at it twice and I still felt the same way. I felt a little bit better about the end the second time around. I was like, all right, it, it, it got cute again. But overall, I give it out of five stars, I give it 2.5. And I'm only giving it the 0.5 because of the star power that was in the movie. But I'm not giving, I mean, I can't give it more than that because the plot was an original. The storyline was an original. It was predictable. 
Um, I felt like they just tried to recreate the original with modern day time. And some of the um, some of the stuff and some of the scenes was just unbelievable and ridiculous to me. And and to me, the original was classy, and the second one was not classy at all, my opinion. So let's get into it. The scene opens up, and I thought this was cute. Um, Eddie Murphy has three daughters, and he he's with his wife, and it's beautiful. And the same one that played his wife in the first one plays his wife again, and her name is Sherry. Headley. So cute little scene. They come, they wake the parents up and you know, it's the anniversary and they say happy anniversary. I thought that was a wonderful scene, cute scene. So the opening, I sat up, I was tuned in, I was ready. I was ready. So now let's go to the next scene I want to talk about. And this is where Eddie Murphy character and Arsenio Hall's character, his name is Simi. They go to see the dad, James Earl Jones, and dad is dying. He's bedbound. Okay, in this scene, he's bedbound. So he's dying. And this is where we get introduced to the fact that Eddie Murphy has this son that he didn't know about back in America. Okay. And they kept calling him the bastard son. Uh, and they used that throughout the movie. I guess they thought it was funny. I didn't. Whatever. Right. So they kept calling him the bastard son. So the, the whole thing of how this son came about to me was just unbelievable. It was stupid. And it took away from who he was in his original character from coming to America. OK. And his original character from coming to America, he was very modest. Very modest. I mean, I watched Coming to America on um, the original like hundreds of times. He was very modest. So they explained it like this, saying that and um, Leslie Jones was the is the mother of his son back in America. So the way they explained it, that him and Simi went to a club. Simi was looking to, you know, sleep with somebody. Um, and the only way he knew would go down is if Eddie Murphy character, he found somebody for him. And, you know, they go back to this woman's house or whoever's house. Um, Simi goes sleep with whatever girl he was with. And then Eddie Murphy, the girl that he was left with, which is Leslie Jones' character, um, she gave him some weed or something like that, whatever she gave him. So apparently he was out of it. Next thing you know, he, he wakes up or like he's halfway in and out and she's on top of him. And I guess she got pregnant and that's how she had his son. <sighs> Did I go for that? No. Did I like it? No. Would I have written it differently? 100% yes. Okay. But let's back up to the scene where... Eddie Murphy was told about his son. One, allegedly, the father knew and Simi knew. Okay? And you're going to see later on when he goes to America, the son wasn't living large with his mother. So if the king knew about this kid and so did Simi, why wasn't they sending money so these people could live better? I had a problem with that. Had a problem that they kept calling him a bastard son. And then here go my third problem with that whole scene and that whole debacle, whatever the case may be. Is that you are going to say that this man, they changed who he was. Like I said, I would have appreciated more if they said one of the bathers. And if you are a fan of the show, you know what I mean. If one of the bathers had his son and the dad knew about it, okay, and he sent this woman away to America to live, to be quiet, because Eddie Murphy was about to get married. And now he's telling him the truth. I I, I could have went for that more because the whole life, the whole theme about the show is that, you know, they had so much money that they never did anything for himself. Eddie Murphy didn't even brush his own teeth when you did Coming to America, um, the original. So I would have fell for it more if they would have said one of the bathers had his child and he didn't even know this woman got pregnant or was pregnant and then the dad sent her off to america and now he needs to go find him or look for him or go get him but and i also would have appreciated if the dad would have kept the woman in the sun living well in america like hidden away that's how i would have wrote it but that's me Okay, so we tell, you know, the date that he gets to know that he has this son. And that's the reason why he has to go to America. But before he goes to America, the dad tells him that he wants to have like a funeral before the funeral. He wants to, I'm going to call it a celebration of life. 
before he actually dies. You know, people always say, give the person the roses while they're here. And, you know, he wanted, so to speak, his roses while he was here. Didn't have a problem with that, but I have a problem with the whole scene. And I'm going to tell you why. So now we get to this funeral before the funeral scene. And before that, dad is in the bed, bed bound, sick, about to die. Now for this celebration of life scene, they have this mummy tomb and he's standing up in it. The whole celebration, he's standing up in this tomb. He was sick as a dog a few seconds ago in the bed, bed bound. Now he's standing up in this tomb for this celebration of life. Big problem with that. In the meantime, Eddie Murphy, his wife, and everybody else, they're sitting down in their chairs, and he's standing up in this tomb, and he's the sickest one for this celebration of life. That's when we bring in some more star power. We have Morgan Freeman. He's like the officiator of this, you know, whole scene, this whole celebration of life. That's when we introduce some um, In Vogue comes. Happy for them. And um, Swan Pepper was a cameo, too, with In Vogue, singing with a man. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Gladys Knight was also a cameo at this um, celebration of life. So she comes in and she's singing. And then at the end, towards the end of the celebration of life, um, James L. Jones, he calls Eddie Murphy over and, you know, pretty much saying, you know, I'm dying now, son. And then he closes his eyes, his head goes down and he's dead. I was sitting there like, is this for real? Who wrote this? Who wrote this? Who wrote this? To me, the way I would have did the celebration of life, he would have been seated at his throne. And remember that video, that Michael Jackson video, Remember the Times? I would have did it similar to that. He would have been sitting on his throne. And that's when I would have introduced how they had an original, those dancers. I would have introduced those dancers. Like dancers would have came out to open up this celebration. And they would have killed it. I would have had Alvin Ellie dancers. Hey, they had so much star power in there. I would have had the girl, and her name is slipping my mind right now, the ballerina, the black ballerina. She would have been there too, dancing. I mean, you had every other star. Bring her in there too. I would have killed the dance scene. That's how we would have opened up his celebration of life. Then everybody would have came, you know, thanking him for being the king. And bowing down and giving him gifts. And yes, have in Vogue saying in Salt and Pepper. Have Gladys Knight saying. The way they twisted up the songs because they talk about how he didn't have a son. I, I thought it was just stupid. I thought they declassed the whole movie. It was just ridiculous to me. I would have changed that whole scene around. I would have wrote it differently. In my mind, I was like, who approved this script? Who wrote this? That's the celebration of life scene. Dad dies at it. And that was that. Like I said, I would have did it different. And then what I would have did was he would have been in his bed that night after the celebration. He would have been thanking Eddie Murphy saying, you know, it was a beautiful celebration. Thank you. I would have had the whole family surrounded around him. And then all of a sudden I would have let him close his eyes. Everybody would have been crying and he would have been off, you know, to his glorious world, seated by the father in heaven. But let's move on. That's not how they wrote it. That's how I would have wrote it. So let's move on. Now he's going to America. They get the jet. And they got to go to America to find his son. The whole debacle of this son, he just pulls up nearly to one spot. And he just finds the son so quickly. He found the son in like 2.2 seconds at the landing. Okay, the son is scalping tickets on the street. And he looks at the picture, looks at this kid and is like, that's my son. Really though? But anyway, fine. Now he talks to the son. They go back to the house. Soon as he walks in the house, the mother's like, oh, my African parents, I knew he was going to come back. It was just messy to me. So now they go back to Zumanda. Um, they're teaching him how to be a prince. And all of those scenes were okay. Wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. It was what it was, right? Had an old scene where he had to go get whiskers off of a lion. It was what it was. We get introduced to Tracy Morgan. Um, you know, it was fine. Um, um, Wesley Snipes was in this movie because 
again now with the sun we bring back original themes we didn't remix it the son is set up for this arranged marriage at first he likes the woman which is tiana teller because she's so beautiful he agrees to the marriage but at the end of the day um just like eddie murphy he didn't want to go with the arranged marriage he wanted to go with the person he truly loved and so you know he runs back to america to marry her but then she just doesn't feel right so then they come back to zumanda and they get married same like the original with eddie murphy Like I said, oh, I'm sorry. Let me add this because a lot of people, I mean, they was just thrilled about this. Thrilled that they still had another barbershop scene, which I pretty much thought fell flat, but that's me. Um, thrilled that at the end they brought the whole character sexual chocolate back. Um, he was singing at the son's wedding. I thought it was okay. And I had a girlfriend that told me that she saw Eddie Murphy in an interview and Eddie Murphy said that he may do a Coming to America 3. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on one second. If he is going to do a 3, this is what I'm going to need him to do. I'm going to need him to, number one, call Shonda Rhimes and have, him help, uh, have her help write this script. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to need them to call the people from the Black Panther movie. I need their costumes. I need, I, I need the dancers. I need them to show the fighting scenes. I need them to come help him, you know, get this whole number three together. The next thing is, I am super happy, super happy that I got to watch this out of the comfort of my home. And that I did not go to the movie theaters and pay all of this money to see this movie because I would have really been disappointed. So I think Amazon overpaid for the movie, but I'm still happy for them because it was so much star power in this movie that they needed all of those funds so that they could pay everybody. But overall, guys, out of five stars, I'm giving Coming to America uh, 2.5 stars out of five. I thought it was a little trashy. I don't know. That's me. That's my opinion. You let me know how you feel about it. Okay? If you watched it, chat with me in the comments. Listen, guys, stay safe. Talk to you soon. My take on Coming to America 2 is it was simply okay. It was a huge disappointment. We waited two decades for this, and it, it fell flat for me. And Star Power, just so you know, if you're a movie buff, Star Power doesn't make a movie. The writing, the plot lines, and the storyline, that's what makes a movie. Listen, guys, stay safe. Talk to you soon. And have a good day.